think over here I can see the faint outline of a coin. Just down there. See it? Let's have a closer look. Yes, it is a coin. It's a little bit. Oh, now look at that. Now that looks like Victoria. Quite a young looking Victoria, actually. And what's this? That Britannia? I can't quite make out what that is. It kind of looks like Britannia, but it also doesn't look like Britannia at the same time. So know, maybe a farthing? I can't see the date either. But that is a lovely portrait of Victoria, and I haven't seen one like that before. Ooh, I'm looking forward to having a closer look at this. Oh my goodness, I have just seen the most wondrous pipe over there. <laughs> oh, I can tell what it is right from here, and I do have one or two like it. It's got a sports design on it. Um, I wonder if you can see it. I'm going to zoom in on it. This is really exciting, really exciting. It's just over here. Look at that. Now, can you see? Can you see what's on there? Look at that! Look at that crisp design! I almost sort of want to delay picking it up because it's so beautiful. Now that is a stunning clay pipe and as you can see it's got some wickets and a cricket bat on it and look at that beautiful seam. I do have a few of these. I wonder if it's the same maker. Oh my goodness, look at that! Look at the little mould <laughs> that it's come out of. A little pipe mould. Oh, that is stunning! Let's find a footprint to give it a rinse. Here we are, perfect footprint. Oh, wow. Imagine that, you go to play cricket, have a little smoke before. There we are, look, look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Some wickets, a cricket bat, a ball, and the same on the other side. I'll find my similar ones when I get home later. Brilliant. Thank you River Thames. Okay, so we're having a really pipey day today. No change there then, but this is a pipe stem, a mere pipe stem. Blackened rather a lot, but I have noticed that there is a maker on there. And the interesting thing is that it's a maker that I haven't seen before. Or rather it's a place on a pipe that I haven't seen before. Because I can see that that's Clapham. Now I can't see the maker at the moment because it's really black and messy but I will certainly will be able to see it later on. Um, let's have a look. I can't quite make that out, but I'm really looking forward to seeing who it is. Oh, hang on. It's a bit easier to see it now. Is that grout? Could be, I've heard of them. Great. Something to look up. Well, my fingers are nicely blackened now. Give them a little wash in a minute. 
just having a look over this area here, there's such a lot of erosion, lots of things being uncovered. Lots of bits of industrial sort of shipbuilding waste. Now, what's this? ring? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's not a ring, is it? It's more like a washer or something. False alarm! Never mind, I'll take it anyway. I'm really getting into my pieces of wood at the moment. Here's another really nice piece of wood, probably from an old ship or something, just down here. I wonder what part of the ship came from. It's really nice, isn't it? Well, it could be from a chair, I suppose. I don't know. What do you think? I love these as well. They're like the knots from old piers or old bits of wood. I'm going to take that and try and dry it out and make something with it. Pro likes that idea. First thing I've seen down here is a little button, a little 19th century workman's button. You might get a maker on there. Pop that in the bag. Oh look, there's a coin, but it's probably be a modern one, I expect. Yes, it is. It's a 2p that can go in the Thames charity box. Look what's waiting for me just down here. Always nice to find these little stoppers. I hope it's a half a stopper. Still. Pretty, isn't it? Victorian glass bottle stopper. And look, there's another button down here. And this one definitely has something on it. Look at that. I'll have to try and work out where it comes from. Okay, look at what I've just found down here. It's part of a, an old knife and it doesn't look very much at all. It just looks like an old, rusty, broken piece of metal. But if you look at it really closely, just at the top here. It looks as if there's a maker's mark on there. So I'm going to keep it just for that so that we can have a closer look at that mark. I'm just going to give it a little wash a minute. Yes, now see just there. Let's give it a little wipe on the old jeans. Yes, now see there. That could be a clue as to how old it is and who made it. So it's worth keeping it just for that. I've got a friend called Graham Duom who is an expert on knives. He's actually written a book all about knives found on the Thames. And so he will be the perfect person to ask. Watch this space.
I just want to show you something which I have just discovered here. Now at first I thought it might be a metal box, kind of looks like it doesn't it? But having picked it up it's actually rubbery and do you know what I think it is? Do you know what I think that is? Such an odd thing to find here. You see there's some glass there, two little glass pieces and two pieces of glass the same the other side. Now I think that this could be a cat's eye, you know, one of the um, cat's eyes that they place down the middle of the road. And the little glass things there, these little round bits, are what catches the light of the headlights. Now, am I right? Am I right? What an odd thing to find. What a very odd thing to find. But then again, then again, you can find anything and everything down on this river. You really can. Now just down here I've seen something which has piqued my curiosity. I thought it was a bit of plant life at first but it looks like a bit of decorative metal look. See the design better from this side actually. See the flower there? <laughs> I can see a little bit of pipe stem just down here. There. I wonder if there's anything on the end. I think there might be, you know. There we are, look. A nice 18th century pipe. And we'll probably get an initial on either side of the little heel there. On the left hand side it will be the Christian name and the right hand side is the surname. Looking at it like this. So many people ask me why are there so many clay pipes to be found on the Thames foreshore? Well, it's because they were basically disposable. They were only smoked once or twice and then thrown away and so many of them ended up in the river. They really are like old fashioned cigarette ends. And here's another one. Pipe stem. It's another pipe stem. Now this one, I don't know, feels quite promising. Feels quite promising. Now if it's in one piece, it could be quite long. Oh, the suspense. Place your bets now. Is there going to be a bowl on the end of this? Oh, I hope so. I really hope so. 
We're about to find out. We are about to find out. And no! <laughs> no, there isn't. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. Is the ball down there? Nope, it isn't. Oh, darn. Hi everyone, thank you very, very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed that outing along the Thames foreshore in London as much as I did. So how are you all? I hope you're well and in good spirits wherever you are in the world. Have you tried anything new recently? I ask because I have, and honestly, it's just changed my world. A few weeks ago, I discovered the Lido, the open air pool, just down the road from where I live. Now it's been there ever since I've lived here, which is quite a long time in this particular place, since about 2007. But when I got back from the Channel Islands a few months ago, I'd been swimming in the sea and I loved it so much. And I knew that when I got back, I was gonna really miss it. So I thought, okay, next best thing, I'll hit the open air swimming pool down the road. So I went and tried it out. And honestly, I just don't know why I haven't been there before. It's absolutely delicious. As soon as I slid into that pool, I knew that that is where I belong in the morning. So now I've been getting up at six o'clock to go for a morning swim every day. And the pool's heated, so it's not freezing cold but it's just cold enough to feel really full of life when you get out. So I just really wanted to share that with you. So if there's an open air pool near you and you want a little bit of zing added to your day, then get up and go swimming in the morning. Honestly, I just can't recommend it enough. Right, so now having told you all about the swimming pool and trying something new, um, let me know if you've tried anything new that's made a difference in your life in the comments below. So now to the mudlarking finds. So an interesting selection of objects here next to me. And I'm going to start with probably one of my favorite finds from this selection. And it is this little coin here. At least I thought it was a coin, but what it is in fact is a token. On one side of it, there is Queen Victoria. And on the other side, there's a figure on a horse, a little bit in the style of St. George and the dragon. And it says on one side, um, Victoria, and then on the other side, to Hanover. And what it is, in fact, is a Cumberland Jack token, dated 1837. They were created when Queen Victoria came to the throne. And when she came to the throne, she couldn't be king of Hanover. At that time, Hanover was joined to the crown. So in her place was sent Ernest Augustus, the Duke of Cumberland. And he was very, very unpopular apparently. And so this token here, this Cumberland Jack token was created to commemorate or celebrate even the departure of Ernest Augustus, the Duke of Cumberland, um, who went off to Hanover to be king. And everyone was so happy that he went, that they created this token, which was then made for years and years until finally uh, it was banned in 1883. It was made illegal in 1883. So that is the story of that, a Cumberland Jack token. Who would have thought? The next thing I'm going to show you here is this button. Now luckily there's just enough detail on it to make out the design and it's because I saw a photograph of something very very similar on the thumbnail of one of my friend's mudlarking videos. You may have watched some of Kevin mammalian mudlarks YouTube videos and on the YouTube thumbnail of one of his videos is a button like this and so thanks to him I was able to confirm that this actually comes from the uniform of the Coldstream Guards and this one dates to about 1805. Next is my humble knife blade here. 
I'm going to show it to you this way around because it's on this side where the cutler who made this knife has made his mark and it's just here. Um, all cutlers had to put their marks on the side of their knives so that people knew who had made them and of course that's really handy now because we can uh, look at these marks and in some cases find out who made them hundreds of years ago. Now I did contact veteran mudlark and friend Graham Duhome about this knife and I think, because I can't find my notes that I wrote when I spoke to him on the phone, I think he said that this knife was probably from the 1700s and he also mentioned that this mark could be related to a cutler named Bell, uh, somebody Bell, but that is uh, from memory. I'm sorry, Graham, if you're watching this, I can't quite remember what you said. And so I'm going to bring it along with me to one of the Thames Festival exhibitions so that you can have another look at it. It doesn't look much, does it? Some people may be thinking, why do you want to keep that? But, you know, it's, um, it's pretty special having the mark of somebody who was alive uh, hundreds of years ago stamped on a piece of metal. And it joins my small knife collection. And these knives are knives that Graham has dated and cleaned up for me. And this one, which is one of my favourites, simply because whoever owned this knife back in the 17, 1800s actually scratched his name into the handle. So not only will we have a maker's mark on the blade, but also we've got HT there on the handle. So maybe somebody like Henry Thomas owned this once upon a time and used it to cut ropes and other things, maybe uh, cut little bits of wood back in the uh, old dockyards of times gone by. Well, possibly the oddest find, I think you might agree, is this. Now, did you recognize this when I picked it up from the mud? It is a cat's eye. Now, for those of you who don't know what cat's eyes are, they are the, the, the things that go down the middle of the road so that when you're driving along in the dark, these little eyes, they, they light up and you can see the middle of the road. And they were actually invented by, I think it was Percy Shaw. I'm just gonna check that. Um, yeah, Percy Shaw, and he was inspired by um, the reflections that he saw in the eyes of cats at night. And so this would have been in the middle of the road, but I just, you know, why, why is it in the Thames? How did it get, get in the Thames? And I actually quite like it. Uh, it's really like a little artefact now, sort of modern-ish, but old artefact, because I don't think don't think they have them like this anymore. They were set in metal and sort of placed along the road. And if cars drove over them, they sort of go sort of down. And these little glass eyes here would be um, like washed almost by scraping against the, uh, against the rubber underneath. And it is definitely one of the strangest things of late that I have found. It's like a little little animal, isn't it? Cat size. And uh, it probably dates back to about the 1930s. And now we come to the pipes. The pipes, of course, it's nice to include um, a fancy pipe. And so I was, as you saw, very excited to find this pipe here. Now from the mid 19th century, sports themed pipes were pretty popular. And so as well as cricket, there's like football, um, even snooker. I saw somebody recently who found um, a snooker or a billiards table type um, theme on a clay pipe. Also swimming and horse riding, all that kind of thing. So this one joins my cricket pipe collection. I have about four or five. They're all very similar. The one I found in this video has uh, wickets and a bat and ball on both sides. 
However, on one that I've got here, it has the wickets or stumps. I'm not quite sure. Is it wickets or stumps or are they both the same thing? Anyway, it's got the wickets and the stumps here and the, the bat. And then on this side, it's actually got a little cricketer. Now I do have, as you can imagine, a fairly large clay pipe collection and I love to display my clay pipes and I usually display them all lying flat in a wooden cabinet with glass on the top. But recently my friend and talented artist Guy Deal shared with me his ingenious design for displaying pipes. And so I managed to persuade Guy to do a little tutorial and I'm going to share that with you now. So these pipe stands are made out of 18 gauge wire. It can be any wire, it could be brass, it could be steel, galvanized. This is untreated. And take a length, approximately 15 centimeters or six inches, depending on where you live. Take my wire cutters. And we'll straighten this out. And then find center, which is right here. Just place a little bend. And this is just a towel, uh, dowel, or you can use a, a pen or a pencil. And you want to start to bend around and then come up and over so you're making one rotation. So you have something that looks like, like that to start with. I'm going to test to see it's a little tight for this pipe. So I'm going to open it up slightly, so it slides on there. It's a good start, and then we can determine how to make the feet at the end of the, of the leg. So you have varying degrees of from small to large loops or, or links and just come around and stop where you started so you get that and what I like to do is just to come back on it to make it look like a or make it look even and then do the same here and you can go in either direction, depending on what you like. So we have legs. So I'm going to come around again and cross them. Then that way, when you squeeze it, it opens it up slightly enough to hold it. Now you can tighten all these connections with your tools. You can adjust these legs any way you want. You can make it more like this, bell shape, if that's your fancy. Mm -hmm. It kind oh, of like that's perfect. Yeah, it kind of mimics something that's the bowl of the of the pipe, and it's, you can fiddle with it until it's the way you like it. The wire is soft enough to play with. Amazing. Good. <laughs> Simple.
Really, really, it's quite simple. simple. Uh, thank you very much, Guy. Oh, sure. And you hold the patent for this <laughs> I do. extremely impressive yeah. clay pipe holder. <laughs> thank you very much for that demonstration. Absolutely. My pleasure. I thought it might be fun if you viewers out there send me photographs of your clay pipes displayed in a Guy Deal patented pipe displayer. And I will do a, a, viewer, a viewer's clay pipe collection special and we can take a look at some of those clay pipes out there. And I'm sure that some of you have got some really interesting designs too. So send me your pipes displayed on a stand like this and we'll do a special viewer's special clay pipe collection video. What do you think of that? And before I move on, I would also like to encourage you to take a look at Guy's um, breathtakingly magical paintings. And you can find them on his Instagram site or on his website. I hope you won't mind, but I've put one up on the screen here, which is called Message in a Bottle. And you can get a, a taste of some of the work which Guy does. Thank you very much, Guy. And I hope to see you again when I'm next over in the USA. And lastly, I'd like to finish with a congratulations to a viewer called Jordan, who has recently got engaged. His fiance, Josh, got down on one knee and proposed to Jordan and Jordan accepted. He was there for his 30th birthday in London. And so that is a day that you are never going to forget. And Jordan and Josh, I would like to wish you many, many, many years of happiness together. Congratulations, huge congratulations. And if you have got a birthday today or you've just got engaged or you've just had a baby or something, you've passed your exams or whatever little thing you want to celebrate, I'd like to wish you all big congratulations and well done. So that is that's it. Uh, we've come to the end of this video. This video is uh, nearly finished. All that remains is for me to just say a big thank you to you all again for watching and for all the support that you give me. And thank you to those of you that have made donations via my Ko-fi and my super thanks. I really appreciate them. And thank you for being yourselves. You are all absolutely great. And don't forget it. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Celebrate yourselves today. So I look forward to seeing you again very soon with some more muddy adventures. I'm out with Sci Finds uh, tomorrow, which is today when many of you will be watching this video. And so we're hoping to find some history in the mud together. And so until next time, everyone, I'm sending you lots of love from here in London. Bye bye. Take care. <laughs>